Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Atiyallah, atiya Rasul, ulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself, ana abduka la jisul da'ifu, miskinu, zalim, jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah we talked about subhanahu man huwa khalaqun nur, the month of Rajab in which Allah bringing out the reality of light. And we talked about the science of it so that people can understand and go back and read that light has a duality, has a particle and a wave. And the depth of that reality is the whole tariqah, is the whole spiritual path. That when people are emailing that, I don't know what it means to be nothing and why do we have to be nothing? And this reality can't be achieved for this light to remain within its particle form. And matter is in three states, solid, liquid and gaseous. And matter to change its state requires an extreme amount of heat. So that nar that Allah gives to us in our existence, the heat and the symbol of the sun. And we find warmth in it, we find our existence in it, we find our vision in it. Without the sun we have no existence on this planet. This is the weakness and frailty of our existence. And Allah is giving to us that your matter and everything is of a matter. If it's a solid state, like any matter that's solid, it doesn't conform to anything. And that's why many people are of a matter state, solid state. Your matter state is solid, doesn't go with anything. It goes with what it is. If it's square, it's square and sees everything as square and most are in that state, most external teachers are in that state and it has to be their way, the highway from what they understood, what they read, what they pursued of its reality and this particle can change. And then they teach us in science that, no, if you apply a tremendous amount of heat to matter, it melts. Doesn't matter if it's rock, if it's steel, if it's butter, if it's a human, it will melt. So tariqahs, because of their connection and love to Allah love to Sayyidina Muhammad these are the way of ulul am in which they carry that light. They carry that reflection of a light more powerful than the sun. And if that magnifier begin to focus, that's why you can take glass on a sunny day get the glass to line up with the sun and put it on to paper and immediately becomes like a fire, it's magnified and can burn through matter. The reality of the shaykhs and the muhibbeen and ashiqeen is that they went towards that sun, they lost their matter, they became liquid in their pursuit and as a result of more of that sunshine shining upon them that ishq and love of Sayyidina Muhammad that shines upon them, they became of a gaseous nature, ethereal. That their matter was brought down, their solid state was brought down, their liquid state gave them to be very easy with people. And as a result of more ishq and more love approaching that reality, they're easily ethereal and that they are of a wave nature always being dressed by that reality, blessed by that reality. 
So it means that it, anywhere we look in these sciences and understanding because it has to make sense. Complicated Islamic terms doesn't mean anything for somebody. But to understand in everyday science you do it in school, you've learned it in school, you understand it that if you live your life solid, very hard, what you understand that's it. And the shaykh can easily interact with somebody and senses they're very solid, they're nowhere near a liquid state. And that's the, the reason for accompanying a guide. Whether now through email, through teachings, through all of these interactions, because as soon as you watch either that day, that night or tomorrow you'll be tested. And immediately you're not catching yourself as if like the talk was for somebody else. If you ask the guys like, what did we talk about? Most of them look at you astonished like, I don't know. You don't remember in five minutes what we talked about? No. But those whom, who wish to achieve their writing and they're struggling to achieve that reality. So when we understood that we want to melt and that solid doesn't get along with anything, then when the testing comes, why give an answer to somebody? <clears throat> when agitated by somebody, why give an answer? When aggravated, why give an answer? The answering back and recognizing oneself because it's still not understood. People are asking, what does it mean to, to be nothing? Then I go around and I'm, I'm going to just be depressed about myself and you got this whole system wrong. You actually have to be very content with yourself when you reach a state of contentment that you're not alone but you're very much with whom you need to be with. That energy, that light, that love and you feel that love, you're not alone. If what you're doing is making you feel lonely then you have not yet connected. So it means this solid state is our character. And that's why the turuqs they speak all the time about ego, ego, ego because if we're losing our solid state, then every time we give a jawab, we give an answer, we give a reply, we ask ourselves, what was the purpose of that reply? If someone bothered me, someone aggravated me, somebody agitated me. When you take the heat, it's that you just, hmm, doesn't really matter. What someone says to you if you were insulted, what does it matter? Means that you're taking the heat of this dunya and applying it to oneself. But if you reflect back that heat then your solid state is continuously throwing fire on other people. Why you said that? As soon as you answer back like that you're not trying to be liquid. You're very content in being solid. So it means that every interaction is going to be now judged by ourselves. Ya Rabbi I want to leave this solid state, I don't want to sit up be arrogant, I don't want to talk down to people, I don't want to command people, I want them to say something to me and I just want to be content in it. Not have a, an issue to have to resolve it and answer back. So then we'll see that dialogue all day long in our lives. Hmm. And then we try to catch ourselves, oh, oh, oh now I'm understanding. It's not about being walking depressed everywhere, it's about just being content saying nothing. Someone yells at you at home, just, huh, alhamdulillah, okay, quiet. If you're a tough man, reverse yourself and don't be tough. And let your wife to be tough on you, beat you, yell at you, scream at you and be patient like Hajj Murtaza. (laughs) 
right? But your culture teaches you to be a tough man, aggressive man, but it's ruining your spirituality, destroying your spirituality. Because there's only two of you in the house, who's going to test who? The feminine is already soft. It's the masculine that's like a hard walnut because your homes don't have like 30 people. Who's going, to te who's going to be testing? The testing is going to come in our environment. Not only the testing at work, definitely if you practice at home you should be an expert by the time you go to work. Everyone aggravate you at work. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So that you are patient and calm. If, if we don't take these testings, the only environment we have is at home. So then at home, ufawud amri in Allah, in Allahu basirun bi libad, Ya Rabbi you see my condition. And then the testing begins, the children begin, the family begins. And we remind ourselves that this is a path of humility, let me just to be humble and let me just to be soft and my character to be soft. But if they're going over the cliff then I'll regain the control of this car. But it's not about that but it's about the character that when somebody's going to interact with us then we're going to have a character that more lenient, more softer, more compassionate. So that that softness in that character can begin to come and the fire of retribution back out is internalized. Mm, you stay quiet, stay quiet, stay quiet. So that that fire is not out but it's in. That's why these nasheeds, if you're listening to the words these are the kalam of awliya. Mawla dilam tang umada, shishay qalbam sang umada, that my chest is, is heavy and my chest is like glass, that I'm cleaning myself, I'm a transparent person. You shouldn't be in the tariqah with the tough skin. Most of those types of people they don't even come to tariqah, they just they're looking for a wrestling match somewhere. They want to go to the, the, the park in Britain and fight everybody in the park and they think this is Islam and da'wah. Everybody's watched their videos, you feel I'm immensely embarrassed like, what the heck are you doing? Who taught you to do like this? Islam is not a, a wrestling match. So it means these are fighters, they, they like fighting, they're looking for a fight and that's the deen that they found is something to fight. But ashiqeen they're looking for Divine love and Allah send them to a school that their skin, their chest is like glass. They're trying and as a result what happens with glass is that every time someone throws something it's like shattering and they're in a state of continuous shatter but they understood they can't take it out on people because they're in something for Allah we said, you can enroll and you know you take 99 years to reach something and the shaykh will wait at your grave to grab you and then take you to where you wanted to go. Or they achieve it in the life they have. They understand, oh I understand what you're talking about shaykh, that everyone and every interaction is Allah putting a fire on me trying to melt me. This is again never abuse, somebody being abused that is an exception. That's not tolerated, you call the police. But the rule is that the dialogue and arguing and all of the fighting and all the interaction, we try our best to remain silent. We stay silent, silent, the burning you have because you didn't answer back and you, you got it again, you got it again and you got it again, then you understand these songs. Because if you're not doing it, you don't understand what they're reciting, what they're talking about. But this is somebody whom has a lot of difficulties and because his path is to have good character, he's not answering back. 
and as a result his chest is heavy or her chest is heavy with difficulty, with sadness and grief. And the only one who can save them is Allah Because only Allah can give a light into the heart and into the chest which teaches them, don't worry everything going to be okay as a means of your difficulty are drawing nearer to me. And that's why the people of good character, we said, don't look at them in their end stages of life, having baglava and sitting and having tea. They said, oh look everybody would go to follow Shaykh Nazim, they would sit and have baglava and tea and, and think that this is the way of being a shaykh. This shaykh struggled, years in seclusion, immense amounts of difficulty. So in their life of training they were continuously under difficulty. In most times it was by their shaykh which now you can't do at all. If you tell the student have chocolate, he says, oh why are you telling me have chocolate? What kind of oppressor are you? I'm never coming again. The shaykh would yell at you, argue with you, sit you down to crush you, see if you're going to run. Remember there was a movie, the, I think it was a gentleman, what was the, the army movie we gave example? A few good men, some army thing where the, the guy is going into being an officer and the officers don't want this guy, he's just nobody. You don't come from a, a, a famous school, you, why are you coming to be an officer in the army? And they kept breaking him and breaking him and, and putting difficulty on him until he cried and said, I have nowhere to go. You kill me here, whatever you're going to do, I have nowhere to go, I am going to complete this. And that's what they wanted to hear. That you know, you're going to play a little bit and go or you're in it to receive it and to achieve it. And that becomes our life and that becomes the example of the shaykhs. That's why Allah says, follow them because they're in it to the end to take their last breath. They've been in too much and in too much difficulty not to. So as a result they're the examples, take the heat, they take the heat. As a result they stay quiet, they stay quiet. People come say, oh somebody talking about you, go answer them back. What are you talking about? We didn't get here by doing that. Stay quiet, stay quiet, stay quiet. If it become too intense that becomes their ishq with Allah That they cry unto Allah verily, you see my condition Ya Rabbi, that this difficulty of mine if you can lift from it I would be most grateful. Whatever you have good in store for me, I'm in need of it now. What Nabi Musa asked Allah Ya Rabbi, have anything good in store for me, I'm in need of it now. So means there's all the dialogue from Ayatul Kareem, from Qur'an they'll talk with Allah But to take our… from people is of no value. And then when they understood that they said, oh how solid they are and how they just don't conform to anything, they're too hard on people, they're too hard on everyone around. And the mentality and psychology the shaitan is playing with them. And they think if they overcompensate for their rigorness and their hardness, people will think, MashaAllah that guy has taqwa, <laughs> right? That's why you see 99% of these Imams are like that, they're not trained, most likely abused in a madrasa, made to be tough and sent out. And then they think in their psychology of shaitan playing with their head is overcompensate your rigidness so that you give the appearance of having taqwa with Allah So they act one way at work, as soon as they go to masjid, everybody here like this, so, oh, this man has such taqwa, he must be a holy person. <laughs> Anything external is not for Allah Tariqah has nothing to do with that. The tariqah comes and teaches taqwa. Taqwa is your muraqaba. What's taqwa? That you have anger character, <laughs> anger characteristics and you think you're equating that to taqwa and God consciousness? Well Allah has nothing to do with your angry consciousness. Anger is kufr, 
So shaitan has played with you to think that your anger and is some sort of a God consciousness. And awliyaullah are coming and teaching, no, no, these characteristics have nothing to do with taqwa. Taqwa and God consciousness is in your muraqabah. You connect your heart, you begin to feel that energy and they begin to open glimpses of energy but like a stick, a carrot with a stick. Did you like that? Yeah, it was very good, immense power, wow, what a beautiful khashf. Then keep coming towards us. And then they say, Shaykh, I was seeing something, it stopped, it stopped, of course, this life is a stick with a carrot and Allah's, come on, come on. Well, He gave you the whole meal, would you do anything tomorrow? No, He give you a bite, take a bite, come, that was delicious, keep coming. <laughs> it's life, we're not going to do anything. So they give these glimpses, they give these energies, you go to zikr one night, boom, you're feeling immensely beautiful energies. It's not going to last, Allah wants something from you, come, keep coming. And as a result of coming, they send you more, they send you more until one day they tell you, you cross that line and you'll never see them again and you'll be behind an iron curtain seven feet in thickness. But somebody blind, what does he care if it's another seven feet or fourteen feet? But one whom their heart are soft and open, if even the curtain become too thick, they become depressed. They relied on that connection, they rely on that faiz and the energy, the ishq and the love that they feel acceptance in that, in that light and in that reality. And if for a moment Allah to become angered with them and that Allah begin to build the parda again, they become depressed, they can't function, that's taqwa. Because they are a faith of witnessing, as a result they fear. They fear Allah will close the door upon them. But one whom is already behind the door, he doesn't even care what, how many times it's been closed. That's not taqwa. If you're blind, you have no taqwa. Your anger doesn't give you taqwa. Real taqwa, why? Because Allah look at the station, Allah. Have a consciousness of Allah and Allah will teach you. It's not an easy station, you're talking about the marifah of Allah in which Allah will begin to facilitate knowledges into the heart where Allah will teach you, the angels will teach you, Prophet will teach you, everything from the heavens will teach your soul. Because your soul is in Allah's rida, these are the highest levels of the nafs, mardiyah. The soul has turned back to Allah pleased and, and glorifying Allah Then Allah is teaching the soul, so then this taqwa is not something easy to achieve. So taqwa is through your tafakkur and your muraqabah. That you connected, you connected, you connected with this energy, with this light. You took yourself in which I don't want to be solid, I don't want to keep having bad character, I don't want to be an angry person, and especially at the most innocent and, and, and vulnerable of people. You want to be angry? Find some big, big guy and go and be angry with him. He beat you down like a kebab. Not to be aggressive and tough with weak and, and, and innocent people. We are the defenders of faith and defending those whom are weak and sick and innocent. So it means that real taqwa, they meditate, they contemplate, they take a hisab every moment that, how did I act, how did I react? Of course I'm going to make mistakes, we're not perfect. And every time we make a mistake we go back and ask on our, on our prayer carpet, Ya Rabbi forgive me, that grant me to be soft, grant me to be compassionate, grant me to have a loving character. And only through that heat and that energy that comes to them in their life 
through their testing and that they remain within a state of silence and good character. They fail one time, they win one time, they fail one time, they win one time. And as a result of that they begin to be dressed by these lights, their solid state is now melting. And they feel themselves melting. They feel their energy is just going, oh, I don't want to go into it again. The person will begin aggravating again. And they stay quiet, they stay quiet. But because they're trained in tafakkur and meditation and connecting their heart, they begin to feel the immense rida and satisfaction. On one night when we had people visiting from out of town, Mawlana decided that was the night he was going to crush. And he was saying all sorts of things, crushing like a fire, crushing like a fire. But as he was speaking, I felt and saw like a, a fire just melting, everything melting, everything melting. So it means the, our lives is the intensity of this tariqah, its energies, its realities and you melt. But as a result of the melting your soul is being freed. And that's why people can't understand that system say, oh look the shaykh doesn't like that guy. No, he's the one whom Allah is raising, he's the only one who can carry that type of tajalli. We said before anyone else you say, oh your chocolate, eat chocolate, oh why you told me eat chocolate, I'm never coming here again. And you see that's why people missing all the time. They didn't like something they heard, they, they didn't like an understanding they had. So here's like a revolving door, they come, they go, they come, they go, on the internet must be thousands more. They come, they go, they come, they go, they like, they didn't like. There are only a few good whom they stay. They endure the heat, they take the difficulty and yet they still didn't reach the shaykh coming after them, exposing them, putting difficulty upon them so that they annihilate and begin to incinerate and, and vanish and their form begins to just vanish, Ya Rabbi. And that's why in Farsi we have it's called abiru. What you call humiliation they call the water of my soul has left me. Means my difficulty became so much in front of people, there's nothing left of my soul that I have been sort of completely taken out. So this language was all for tariqah, was for this, this way of spirituality. They don't have the word humiliate, they have a word in which my soul has been destroyed. That you took all the, the water from my soul and my existence out. It means that person melted, completely melted. Their entire form is, is melted, all they have is Allah All they can rely on is Allah Then they understood the ishq and the muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad because Allah began to send in Rasul Kareem. The immensity of the love and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad that comes and brings back that soul into that reality and into that light. As a result their solid state went down, they entered into a liquid state. So then liquid state they're very tolerant, very peaceful, very calm. They try their best to accommodate so that people can learn. And that's why people come to tariqah and they come and they make all these comments, this is great, they, you know, these shaykhs are not tough, they're not hard. They're allowing everyone because Mawlana Shaykh would teach that make the gates of paradise as wide as possible. Then people say, oh so we can be liberal? No, 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 you're supposed to go up in life, you don't take the elevator down in life. So the shaykhs are, are very soft for people. Not because they're like that, is that the elevator's on the ground floor. So they live with them in their lives and we have to go up. But the elevator has to be at a floor in which people can come, 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 come. Even you broke your vow thousand times, come, come and come again. 
But we're not staying here, we're going up. Means each day then you try to make it harder upon yourself, you follow more of the sharia, more of the sunnah, more of the way. So when you hear these liberal talks, oh the shaykhs are tolerant, yeah they're tolerant for people to come day one. But they're expecting to be rising at a high level of consciousness, at a high level of understanding, especially through all these difficulties. These acts of faith require a tremendous amount of adherence to Allah's Islamic law. If you leave the Islamic law, you leave the shelter of Allah's shade in a day in which we live in which stones are coming upon people. There's like fire going to be flying from the skies. So their duty is to bring people, come, 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 don't worry about it, let's not discuss it right now, come in. Feel the ishq, feel the love, feel the desire to please Allah When you feel that love then you should be challenging yourself to be doing more, adhering more, trying to challenge yourself that I want to submit more. And that's why only the, the liquid shaykhs can do that. Because the solid ones they ban everyone, no I want to talk to anyone, nobody going to come. But for this audience has to be liquid to be tolerant and then to lift them up. Be tolerant, you know they can lift ships with water, right? If you go to these canals, this massive ship, they don't lift it with a crane to the next level to go through a canal. What they do is they fill it with water, the ship rises, goes through the canal. They lower the water, the ship goes down. Means with a liquid state you can lift a lot more, you can collect a lot more. People are attracted to the softness but doesn't mean it stays low. But because of that reality of the softness it can lift everything up. But it has an entryway that's accessible for people to enter, the just of the talk was an understanding in the particle state and these are the three states of matter. This particle if it's solid gets nowhere, it has to enter a state of liquid, lucid. Once it's liquid the heat that comes to it becomes ethereal and then these are the students that are experiencing through their soul these realities. And only through that ethereal and gaseous state when they send their soul out, the soul is collecting knowledges and information. So tafakkur and contemplation is not that you just look at something and, and say, oh I want to see how do you get the wisdom of something, oh look there's a grasshopper in my backyard. Shaykh in the email, what's the, the logic of the grasshopper in my backyard? That wasn't the tafakkur. The tafakkur is that when you meditate and meditate and meditate you operate through your soul and when your soul moves through your backyard it feels the energies of these creatures. And only through your energy going out and going into that energy you pick up the wisdom of what that creature is. And all that Allah has created from this world of light, your light goes into it retrieves its information and its knowledges and comes back to your soul loaded with knowledges and information. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us and that give us more and more understanding of how to lose a solid state, how to be patient and tolerant through everything and make no excuses that, no this, this time I have to be angry. It just stops the formation of a liquid state in which everybody wants to be liquid. Everybody wants to have experiences, everyone wants to have the, the benefit of the tariqah teachings. But in their solid state they can't reach it. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding of the good character, be patient, be tolerant and that Allah open these realities for the soul inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amin yasifoon. Wa salaamun ala mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa siri Surat al-Fatiha.